Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. The word of the Lord. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant, he may give to you <laughs> to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, in our inner beings, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Very well, Akas. That's such a strong statement, right? God has to give to us before we can have Christ dwell in us, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that passes, that surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far abundantly than we can ask or think according to the power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church, even in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Father, I pray now that you would give us eyes to see these truths and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wow. <laughs> so strong. My goodness. He, he climaxes with this prayer, this, this doxology. Let's go ahead. Let's look here. I'm just going to start making some, some significances and, and talking through some things. And um, go ahead and ask your questions if you have. Okay, so... Um, Let's go ahead and, and then let's look at verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. And so here we have this, this here, the, 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 the main verb is this verb of, of, of bowing. So this is, a, this is an action here. And the focus is before the presence of the Father. And so we can say here that this is, this is the location or we could say the location or the object of his prayer, right? Even though this is an action, what, what, what is the, 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 literally he's bowing his knees, he's, he's, he's on his knees, but what's the bigger action? What could we say is the bigger action that's going on here? Does anyone want to try to think about what is that larger action that's, that's going on here? Okay, yeah, so there's definitely this component here of, let's write that down. So there's this idea of, of submission, Humility, for sure. Excellent. But, 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 it, yeah, so that, that's part of it. But is this not then, if, if he's, if he's prostrating himself before the Father, he's bowing his knees, is this not an act of, of prayer? So, so Paul is going to be praying, praying this prayer, okay? If you combine the bowing with the knee, then that is prayer. Yeah, Tama, that's excellent. Or so surrender, or surrender, yeah. or surrender. So this is this is um, the object of of the knees, the, the, the combination of the two. That, that that's great. I, I, good clarification. So just to be clear, when when I'm when we're preparing, preparing these outlines, this this statement here is combining what Kuiwo Boy said. It's combining the action of bowing plus the knees plus the father. So as you prepare your structure analysis, if you're doing it yourself, be thinking about, you're not just, maybe sometimes you can just directly connect. Sometimes you can just directly say, oh, this is just an action. But other times you're looking at the whole sentence and you're saying, what is going on here? What's the bigger idea that's going on? So here it's a prayer. And Paul is not praying. The object of Paul's prayer is here. This is the object. We could say the saints. So we could say to, to further clarify, we could say this is uh, intercessory. He is praying just like in Ephesians 1. He is interceding for another. He's not praying for himself. He's interceding for another. So this is intercessory prayer. What's your question for verse 14? Anyone have a question or it makes sense? There is one question I had. Maybe you can identify. Any questions from verse 14? What is the reason? That's the question. Ah. What's the reason? Yeah, no, excellent. 
What is it? So let's ask for a moment. What do you think is the reason? Uh, in the previous verse, he was actually referring to his troubles, to his what he was going through, what he was going through. That's why he was like saying, for this reason, don't mind my suffering, don't mind my troubles, don't mind my what, what I'm going through. I think that was how he stated, for this reason, I buy my just... He was just assuring, probably he was assuring them not to, not to be mindful of what he is uh, going through. But, but for him, he is concerned about the Ephesians. Excellent. No, I, I, think, I think you're spot on, um, Koyo Boboy. He wants, them, he wants them to have this understanding. He's hoping that they will have his perspective. That God is, is, is saving He's redeeming. He's reconciling. He wants them to have this perspective. And so he's praying to the Father that the Father would enable them to have this perspective. Does everyone see that? That's really powerful. That, that seems to really indicate that, again, in line with what we've been saying before, God must act, not just in our salvation, but in our, our spiritual maturity, in our understanding. We must be dependent upon the Lord. And look at the source. Look, look, look at this. This is so powerful. So the description of the Heavenly Father is the one from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. So let's, let's, let us rework. We're going to paraphrase this to bring clarity here. So we could say the Father names every family in heaven and on earth the father names every family in heaven and on earth and so the question is is this is this, is this every family without distinction believers and unbelievers we would have to disagree with believers and unbelievers because it includes in heaven so what we would want to say is every believing family so this is, these are saints that have passed from the old, this is Old and New Testament saints, Jew and Gentile. And think about the power of, this is intimate knowing, Diva. If, if, if God is, is naming each one of these families, this is not a king that's far off just doing his thing, and we just happen to be a part of his Messiah. This is intimate. This is an intimate relationship. This is an intimate relationship. God is intimately involved in each one of our families. It's very powerful. Uh, just to give a, a, a quick nuance, some people will say this is angels and families, but I just, I really, I think that's a hard read. I really think that the context is Old and New Testament saints. That's the broader context of chapter two, chapter three, and it's Jew and Gentile. Uh, go ahead if you, if you have a question. All right, so let's move on here. Let's move on to verse number. I'm sorry, verse number 16, verse number 16. So, so Paul is interceding. What is the content then of this prayer? What is the content? And this is going to get crazier because we, we discussed this last time before back in chapter one. Look at the content, okay? Number one, we have uh, in, we could say, uh, this, is, this is accordance or agreement. In agreement with the, the riches of God's glory. He's so powerful. He has so much wealth. And, and specifically, the, the glory is, we could think of this as well as a form of, of majesty or power. There's a nuance there, but what I'm trying to get at is that it's connected with immense wealth. The, the request is for that God, this is the request that God may grant. <laughs> that God may grant, or we could say give, that God may give you, make you be strengthened. So this is the object action, if you can imagine. So the, the strengthening is being done to you, if everyone can imagine that. So Paul is asking that God would strengthen us, and he can easily do that, correct? Because in, in Ephesians in Ephesians 1, 15 to 19, he has this great power. It's this resurrection power. 
And so now Paul is asking specifically, right? So um, uh, let me just quickly read, let me quickly read Ephesians 1.19. So what Paul says is, he says that he wants him to, that he wants them to know about the hope to which he has called you. He wants them to know about the riches of the glorious inheritance and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe. What kind of power is it? We talked about how it's resurrection, resurrecting power. It's, ascent, it's, it's Christ ascending power to the heavenly places. It's resurrecting us from death. It's bringing together two people that are at animosity between each other. They're hostile between each other. But then here, look at this kind of power. Look at this. It's the kind of power that's going to do something in our hearts. To be clear, this is the... This is the, the object that's going to go into, that, that, that God's going to use to strengthen us. This will strengthen us, his power. The means or the agent is his spirit. And notice this here. The, correct, in, in, in our own lives, we would think we would want physical strength, right? We want physical beauty. We want physical needs to be met. But look at the location here. The location is our, is our inner being, that we be strengthened in our inner being. And this comes back to, this literally comes back to what Kuyo Boboy was saying. The perspective, so much of our struggle, we're going to struggle, we're going to suffer. Every one of us has a different cross to bear. But what's, what we need the most, more than maybe our daily necessities, although God will provide, what we need more than daily necessities, or we need more than some physical money. We need strength in our inner being. How many tempt, think about this. If you cannot control your heart, you give in to temptation every time. So, so if we are to control our temptation, it has to start in our heart. And what Paul is praying here is that God would do the work. <laughs> So many times we are trying to, to overcome temptation, but we're not asking God to do the work in us. And these, this is believers. This is not pre-converted. These are believers. This really speaks to the need that not only in our salvation and our conversion, but we need God to continue to work in our hearts. Look at this, the purpose. So let's be very specific here. This purpose of being strengthened, given by God. If ever you were debating from, from Ephesians chapter 2, from Ephesians chapter 1, faith comes from me originally, right? The source. If ever. If ever. So that Christ may dwell. Oh, my goodness. In your heart through faith. We could say here, this is live. That Christ may live in your heart through faith. So maybe our, our struggle with perspective, our struggle with temptation, we haven't been praying that God would strengthen us in our inner being. We've been looking at peripheral issues. If we're looking at big perspective here, content number one. So content number one is this prayer that we would be strengthened in our inner being by God so that we can have Christ dwell in us. Number one, the emphasis at this point is not on us to have faith, Diba. Not until later. Later, he's going to call on us to do things. But up until this point, it's all focused upon God. Number two, let's look here. So, so let's prepare here. Now we have content number two. We're, gonna, we're looking at a content number two. So content number one. Content number two. What is the second thing? that Paul is praying for the saints. Number two, that you, yeah, no, this is really good. So being rooted in, and, and grounded also speaks to God's work, Diba. We have here the, this is the passive. Yeah, so this, so this could be passive. It also could be another tense, but at least the ESV takes it takes it as passive, being rooted and being grounded. So this idea is that God is the one doing this. God is the one rooting and grounding us in love. 
Okay, this is this is God's work here for sure. Excellent observation, Ray. But look at the goal here. What is the purpose for this rooting and grounding? It's to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and depth. Yeah, so no, excellent. So uh the 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 the, the breadth, length, height, and depth. The love of father. Yeah, so we have we, we could say love of of God, Christ, right? Connection down to here. So that's one possibility, and that's part of it for sure. What I think, what I think also must be, maybe the accent is on this. Uh, we could we could say includes this. Included God's plan of redemption. The accent is here. And so, of course, absolutely it includes the love of God, the love of Christ. These two are inseparable, okay? So I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're incorrect. I'm just highlighting the work of God to bring about the unification, the breadth, the length, the height, the depth. And of course, within that, right? So this is, this is the plan of redemption in Christ. So in Christ is always included. So again, I'm not minimizing love of Christ. I think that, I think that's fundamental to this, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to, I'm trying to expand it a little more beyond to include it. If that makes sense, I'm expanding it more. So love of Christ would be, would be uh, inside. It would be inside this. Okay. Does that make sense? But, but the big, the, 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 the big picture is, is this God's plan of redemption, Trinitarian plan of redemption in Christ to save us. So we can imagine here, this is knowledge, right? We're knowing something. And we can be sure of that because of this word comprehend. Trying to comprehend what God has done for us. But then there is this intimate knowing. We could say here, this is this is a experience. It, have you experienced the love of Christ? Do you do you know about God's plan? Are you able to comprehend it? And people, the Bob people will say, no, that's so deep. Don't don't go there. You're you're, you're going to pursue knowledge. It's it's sin. It's, it's it's too deep. Here, this is Paul's prayer. Paul wants them to comprehend the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of their salvation. He wants you to go deep, and he wants you to experience Christ's love experientially. So if ever someone says, it's not that, it's this, you can just say, it's both and. Let's, let's pursue knowledge to, to understand what God has done for us, and let's pursue experiencing Christ's love. And if someone were to say this is this is prideful, you are prideful, you can't, you can't because of the sovereignty of God. God is the one doing this. It's God's work that's enabling us to experience this. And this type of this type brings us to a place of humility, and it changes our perspective when the world is going crazy around us. Number three, look at the third content here. So we've got two so far. Number one, that God would, would strengthen us. He would strengthen us with his power. Number two, that, that we would be able to comprehend being rooted and grounded. God, God having rooted and grounded us, that we would be able to comprehend his plan and the love of Christ. Number three, content number three, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is the presence of God, that we would be filled with the fullness of God. That's, that is so amazing, is it not? That, that the goal for creation was that God would be inside of us. So coming back, let's come back to the second. Let's go back to Adam, Adam and Eve. Is this better than Adam and Eve? How did, how did Adam and Eve experience the presence of God? Someone, someone tell me. Took the cool of the day. Uh, they have uh, one uh, personal 
I, they, they, so they can see God uh, face to face. But it's only external, diba. It's only external. Their experience with God was external. Even with Jesus, diba, the people only experienced Jesus externally. We, we cannot minimize. God is filling us with his presence. Anyone saying they want to go back to see the miracles? This is the greatest miracle of all, that God, the greatest miracle of all is that God dwells in fallen humanity. And we don't even understand the depths of our own sin. This leads, what is Paul's response? What is Paul's response? Paul's response is doxology, right? This is a doxology. Doxology literally means a, uh, uh, attributing glory, or we could say uh, praise to him who is able, description, who is able to do far more abundantly than we could ask or think. Up until this passage, has there been any description of what we have done? Let's, let's, let's think for a second. How many action statements have there been, action words? From, from So we're looking at Ephesians, Ephesians 1 to 3. What action words have been used concerning our doing? It's hard to find, right? Goodness. To praise him. So we have this, there is this praise and blessing, right? So, so Paul says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. So so you, so you have this blessing of praise. Go ahead, Paul. What is another action word that, that man, humanity actually does? Prayer. Okay, so, so, so Paul prays. Any other action words that man does in Ephesians 1 to 3? Any other action words? Okay, worship. So, so praise, blessing, worship. Worship would be here declaring glory, but it's still in that, that they're all the same, right? So you have praise, blessing, worship. There is this Paul praise. Any other action words in Ephesians 1 to 3? Asking God is praying, Diba. So that's just prayer and asking is the same. In intercession, you could also say interceding. Okay, yeah. So, so there is this, this, this word of, of, of knowing. So there is certain things that we need to know. We're called to know. That's great. What else? Any, any other action words? Paul, go ahead. To submit ourselves to God or to give our, ourselves to God. So what's the word? What's the word that is, the, I want the, 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 the Ephesian word for submit. What is that word? Faith, faith, right? Faith. That's it. These are the only action words for three chapters. And if you think about it, praying is, you're asking God to do something. So you're not doing anything. <laughs> praying, you're asking God. Knowing is, is within the heart. Faith is trusting that God will act. <laughs> Goodness. And then all they can do in response is, is, is praise and bless. So what I really want us to see here is that all of the doing, all of the doing in Ephesians 1, 2, and 3, God does all of the actual physical action, the physical actions to save us. All of those physical acts are done by God. I hope that you see this. And so it's God who does. And it's in accordance. It's in accordance with, in agreement with, this power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And so up until this point, our response to God's work is just to praise and glorify him. That's it. There's nothing you can do. You can never, you can never give utang. You're, you're forever in utang to God. You, there's nothing you can ever give to God that would even, all you can do is just praise and thank him for saving you and bringing you into this incredible position. Uh, last thing I want to highlight here is this in the church and in Christ, we would think, oh, that's two things. But in reality, the church is the body of Christ, right? The body of Christ. And so this is not, this is not one, two. 
That's wrong. This is one clarification. And what this is signifying is union with Christ. To him be glory in Christ Jesus. We are his body in the church, the body of Christ, union with Christ. To him be glory throughout all generations forever and ever. And I do want to highlight this here. This speaks to forevermore our unity with Jews. So we've discussed about other theological systems, and but I want to really highlight here that we are forever in unity with Christ and with his church forevermore. And this is, this is Jewish Messiah. So that's not to say that God is not going to save the Jews one day, but he's going to save them through the church in Christ Jesus. Christ is going to sit on a throne on earth, and we as his church will reign with him, Jew and Gentile. So we're not spiritualizing away the promises. They will still happen, but everything is going to happen as co-heirs, co-partners, co-members of the body of Christ. I really want us to see that here, that forevermore, we are in union with Christ to the praise and glory of God the Father.